And I will also put both of these, post both of these on YouTube. Um, oh, probably about 15 hours after we're done here. All right, um, here we go. Oh, sorry. So this is the whole outline. It has all of them on it. And so you can compare and contrast how different they are. Um, another thing that you might, uh, another lesson learned, there's a couple lessons that I can imagine you might learn uh, reading this when you're 18, 19, 20, is that among your peers or your siblings, you might notice these patterns. And then you sort of think, well, how is their life going to turn out, right? How is their career, midlife, you know, parenting? These people all have a huge life trajectory. So what seems a bit odd in high school might turn into, you know, it just, people tend to just become more and more what they are rather than to correct for it. That's why uh, it's really important to have role models in high school, you know, adults who could help a kid who's headed down a path to just self-correct, right? To help a kid who overreacts with anger to talk, right? Learn how to communicate your anger, Hermes, to take a kid who's impulsive. And the teacher would just, instead of just disciplining, yelling, making him feel bad, just identify that this is a kind of pattern and they need somebody to sort of guide them. So another point I think that just keeps coming out is that you don't make a kid feel bad for who they are. There's some, some aspects of their personalities are deeply embedded. And they're, they're embedded in a patriarchal um, collective unconscious. Like these are instinctual drives that have gotten deeply embedded through 400 years, you know, 4,000 years of male domination. And um, well, at least 3,000 years of male domination. So it's hard to, um, you know, you can't undo that tomorrow, but you can definitely start guiding. So kids need guidance. And it's very important that there are adult mentors who are well-balanced personalities. Uh, it's good for their parents to be. And if their parents aren't, you know, for them to find a father figure or a mother figure, um, all of that stuff I think is important. And I was not aware of any of this when I was your age. Um, and I suppose that's what people mean when they say age brings wisdom, but the wisdom stories, the literature is trying to educate you to prevent problems, right? We don't have to all keep making the same mistakes. We can learn from the wisdom of the past. Um, and I didn't learn till after the fact, right? <laughs> First I had to suffer and then I I thought about it and I go, oh my gosh, those stories, they really are about me and I really could learn from them. So um, it didn't occur to me again to, to give my book to college students, but I just, you know, I tried one or two students at first and I'll never forget the first day that the students had read from my book and they came to class and this one girl said I love this book and I was just wow that is not what I thought I thought it would just be you know Dr. Beck is making us think about her life like she's so self-absorbed but um 
you know, it just seems like you all are inspired and you're thinking, and that's what matters. Doesn't matter who wrote the books. All I, my book only says, these people were wise. So, um, so I didn't write this book about the gods, but when you think about that this woman was a therapist, this is not a matter of opinion. This is not made up. She just says, she has these people come she recognizes the pattern that, you know, she knows what, you know, what direction they need to go. She doesn't know whether they will. Uh, but it is amazing to me that psychology rejected all of this. Modern psychology, the blank slate, and they emphasize behavior modification when this stuff wasn't made up. It's not bad science. It's actually good psychology um, because our instinctual drives don't go away. And if we don't incorporate them, if we don't um, integrate that aggression in some healthy way, give it a cultural outlet, give it respect, uh, it just goes bad and it undermines civilization. So, um, and also, so the two main projects are to take that aggression, find a way to channel it, and then to take the relationships between men and women, the way that each uh, animus and anima, gender or orientation, tends to project or misunderstand or use or abuse the other one, right? That people would develop knowledge, uh, especially Hephaestus, right? His problem is he projects onto these women some image in his head of who they are. And then even Persephone might decide she can't adapt to that, you know? And so that's another thing we really have to think about that's hard to think about um, because, and, but it's there and it's deeply rooted. Um, okay, so uh, the other thing is I always go out and exercise every day and there's a man about three blocks from me in a certain direction. And he's out in his front porch and he has this chainsaw and he, he makes sculptures out of uh, tree trunks. I don't know if you've ever seen this kind of uh, sculpture before, but he would be a classic Hephaestus. He lives in a small house. He smokes a lot. It's clear that he's a loner. I don't, I haven't seen any wife or kids around. Um, you know, he could be the kind of guy that was rejected, but he still makes his sculptures and he has some of them out in his front yard and I buy a lot of little crafty type stuff. I have a lot of it in my house, but I can't, I can't buy anything that big. <laughs> a tree trunk won't fit in my house. So anyway, so in his workshop, he's supreme, but he's totally at a loss outside of it. He has no social skills, right? Um, Okay, so in the early years, this is when it's so important just to let your child be who they are and to find a way to channel it, right? If they're rejected or abused, really bad, right? Because once you get to school, uh, kids are mean, right? And they are insecure about their own identity and so if a kid can't get home, go home and at least be affirmed, it's trouble. And, and also teachers should really try to be very aware of this stuff. Um, in the myth, he's rejected. Um, and again, you shouldn't play favorites with your children. That's really awful. You should never do that. That creates sibling rivalry that cripples people. My grandpa... <laughs> My grandpa was the black sheep of the family, and he had a big brother that was always lording it over him. 
and telling him he's such a sinner and he's, you know, the bad guy. And like his life trajectory <laughs> went bad, you know? And that was really, really not smart. It should be intuitively obvious to a parent not to do that. But here's all the research, right? Here are the myths. Here are the stories. Um, okay. Um, adolescence, the best thing for these people is to get to an arts and crafts school, right? And to find mentors because the teachers at those schools will, all the students are like them. And so that would be by far the best way to integrate their passions into the culture. The culture has to be accepting of this, take advantage of it. But, you know, if he's rejected and abused, he tends to be passive aggressive, like women often are passive aggressive and they humiliate people. And he also, as we see, will get, will become the class clown in order to avoid being humiliated. Um, okay, so um, his relationships with women, he's, you know, can make or break him. He doesn't mind if women are powerful. Um, he admires them for their intelligence, doesn't compete with them. Relationships with men, of course, he doesn't want to be in the sports team. Um, he's not a normal guy. Um, he can go with friends um, and maybe go to the bar and have a drink or two and kind of break down their inhibitions and bond in some way. Um, yeah, he's, he's faithful, but he's not super, you know, passionate. And so if she, if his wife, that's not enough for her and she's unfaithful, that's trouble. Um, he has this inner image of her and that might not be who she really is. He would expect her to take care of their relationships. She might be an agent that markets his work for him. Um, if it's Aphrodite, who he was married to in Greek myth, um, she he, he's not sexually passionate enough for her over time. So she goes after Ares, the god of, of war, the aggressive sex and aggression. And then, um, then she comes back because that, that's too... <laughs> too dynamic in a uh, relationship, the fireworks. So she comes back. Um, this is the Persephone adapts to her, but um, it might not be who she really is. And if she leaves, then he's gonna condemn her. He's gonna say, women are evil. You know, he probably will become more anti-women than is actually fair. Um, children, he's hard to predict, often didn't want children because family life wasn't very satisfying. Not a good communicator. He's not a good role model. He can't network them, his kids with his friends or his friends buddies. Um, but, you know, if he takes them into his workspace and they have fun together making stuff, um, then in midlife, you know, he could be happier if he managed to have a career and family. Um, but, you know, the chances are he'd be rejected and it would just keep snowballing. Um, let's see. He acts like a buffoon, right? Um, just just uh, not to get uh not to get completely humiliated and criticized he'll just sort of act like self-effacing i know that african americans in the past have played these sort of awful stereotypical roles that's just awful because racism was awful um 
it's a way of coping. He'll be the Mr. Nice Guy. But underneath that, of course, it's repressed. Um, of course, that makes it hard. When he has his own repressed emotions, then when he becomes the father, he can't handle all the responsibilities and he will project a lot of negative stuff onto other people. Um, now, his big thing to grow is to realize there was something wrong with the way he was treated, right? It wasn't that you, there was something wrong with you. There was something wrong with the adults or people giving you the impression that there was something wrong with you. That's, that would be such a huge um, psychological disease that he would have, that he'd have to overcome or, or, or wounding that he'd have to overcome. Know thyself, um, know others, find a few significant friends, develop these other archetypes, uh, become more than just Hephaestus. You have to balance it out. Right. So that's just a big theme throughout this is that everybody's got to balance a lot of them. It's just that you kind of know what your fallback position is or what your starting point position is. And then you have to figure out how to correct for your weaknesses. And everybody needs to find some kind of a substitute parents if your parents aren't, aren't, you know, really able to um, raise you, care for you appropriately. So, all right. Um, okay. All right, so Nahida. All right, Lakin, did you come up with one? Are you there, Lakin? Yes, so the example I thought of was from a TV show, it's this character named Ron from Parks and Recreation. And he's known for being very introverted. You know, he doesn't show his emotions very well. And um, he's also, yeah, no, he's known for making wooden furniture. And like, he's very, I don't know, he's like old fashioned thing thinking and like he doesn't yeah. trust like corporations like so he would rather you know build his own baby crib for his future child than to go out and buy one and he doesn't trust baby books and he's very anti-government even though he works in for the government but <laughs> yeah he's who I thought of okay do you think the people who wrote those scripts know about the archetypes that's a good question. I was trying to think of like if I could fit any of the other characters in. And I would say that his previous wives were both Aphrodite's. Like he gets very overwhelmed by women and lets them like control him. You no, know, I do think that those script writers know. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what you start realizing. Um, but I think what, they, what the art is, is that you take these old myths, but you embody them in people around you, not in a way that, uh, in a way that makes you realize that is who they are. Does that make sense, Lakin? Yes. As opposed to stereotypes and mislabeling people. It's really based on a deeper understanding of people. Does that... Does that make sense to to the rest of you too? I, I hope so. Um, because there's a difference between finding a pattern and just the kind of polarizing labeling, right? That is so empty. And um, it's just a shadow projection. You're just calling somebody something that makes you feel better. Um, so archetypes are a lot more complex than that. Um, okay, Rupia, what do you think? Did you find one?
Okay, Poppy, did you find one? Okay, so Rupia didn't find one. Okay, Poppy, I did didn't, I didn't professor yet. Okay, uh, Claire, did you find one? I'm still working on fully piecing it together, but I was going to use the character Tony Stark, which is also Iron Man from the Marvel movies, because um, he's a craftsman. And definitely in the movies, I would say personally, I mean, it's been a while since I watched them, but he is uh, seen as supreme. He makes high technology creations that have, you know, their own abilities that are just out of this world. He's very intense um, when he works on his creations. He's very introverted, like he does it himself uh, with intense focus. I would say that, like I said, it's been a little bit, but he does have some of like the heightened emotions. Not that this God is just insanely emotional, but he can allow his emotions to triple him is kind of how I understood it. And I think that that's definitely shown in the movies as well, but mainly just that he was a highly productive man that was a craftsman. And a loner. Yes. Okay, so that would be like um, a surgeon. Remember, she said this certain surgeon is totally yes. absurd. Yeah, because um, the, the first example was a guy that's against high tech. And but some of the stuff that a Hephaestus type get into can be pretty high tech. Um, but in general, it would be the Apollos, like Bill Gates, who would have invented some of that stuff. Um, but a Hephaestus can actually work with it too, right? Just like, and I, she compared the two kind of doctors. Some of them, most of them are Apollo, but then a few of them are these Hephaestus. Does that make sense, Claire? Yes, it does. Okay, um, Louis, what have you got? <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I think I have an example. Uh, one of my older brothers, he's a architect. Um, oh, he's yeah. Were, yeah, he's, he's, a, he, he's were an extrovert child. He's never expressed his feeling to other people, even with the people in his family like my parent and me. Um, he's, he doesn't talk too much with my parent. Um, I, but the one point I think that from the outs, from the ins, from the outside, are the people like think that he's a, like an uh, indifferent guy, but inside he, he an emotional person. Like uh, whenever the holiday, he back to the hometown with, the pa with my parent, he always take care of them and help them with the work, although he didn't he didn't talk much to them. Um, and like at home, like he keeps staying in room for the whole day, like designing how and stuff like that. Um, after graduate from art university, uh, he did not work for any company, and he he just he doesn't want to depend on anyone but want to build a career for himself by himself. And after five years struggle fighting the weight for himself, like he finally um, built a special style in designing house. And I think uh, now people come to know with him with his special style and date uh, and people uh, come ask him to design house for them. I think it's, yeah. Good for That's him. very good. I'm glad. Yeah. Did, your parents, did your parents support him all growing up? Um, actually, like, I think not too much because my parents they have to work all the day, and he he had he studied art university in the city, and they and my parents in my hometown was in my hometown at that time, so they can support like a financial need for him 
and sometimes uh, they come they came and visit him several times uh, during four years of university yeah that's all well i mean they didn't criticize him for going to art yeah, school no. yeah no yeah well that's the key that's the key right um so they supported they were in favor, they were happy he found something that he could do. That's the main thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. They didn't want him necessarily. Yeah, but to make I think one more point in like, yeah, my brother is the person who just, just do what they, what just do what he want. Even when my parent like objected him, he will do it as any any way he would do it yeah okay. so okay so yeah that's so my parents know that uh if uh even if they uh they uh criticize him he will do it anyway so <laughs> <laughs> okay they didn't confront him after a while right yeah. okay yeah. i mean you can and parents who absolutely wouldn't put up with it, how harmful that would be? Yeah, I uh, think. It seems like common sense, but parents sometimes are crazy. Okay, May, what have you got? Uh, yeah, I have one example of my friend. Like he is introverted and he has interest in two things. One is physics, like natural science stuff, like um, which which is related to machines, and also he has interest in art, especially filmmaking. Um, he is also working in one filmmaking project um, in the position of uh, researching, um, and kind of he he cannot really talk to many people because not uh, not many people has the same interest with him. And also because he he's an introvert, he doesn't really um, join many like kind of class activities or school activities. So people often don't really like him, even his parents. Um, I remember he told me before that uh, his mother even said to him that he is useless and he doesn't, I, he will not grow up doing anything well for this society, kind of like that. Because he, because she doesn't really support him pursuing like physics and also art, um, but thankfully, like he has a good self awareness, so he is kind of very firm. He doesn't let many people affect like his belief um, in himself, and he also told told me that he wants to go to art school and he wants to talk with artists because like. Um, he feel that he couldn't really talk with like people who don't like believe in um, in himself and also don't really understand the impact of art. But when he talked to some of the artists in my country, he could feel that he belonged to that community. So he still go to art school and do what he wants. Good. Uh, does he have teachers who support him? Um, not really. Actually, in Vietnamese high school, we are not uh, learning art or may maybe drawing, filmmaking or kind of stuff like we, we are not learning that in school. So um, he's kind of struggling with that. So that's why he has projects outside so that he can like work on it. Okay, so I, I hope you understand that in Greek culture and even in ancient cultures, the educators are the artists, right? Because they educate your emotions. They teach you how to be mature. Whereas in our science-based culture, you can be smart, but immature, right? Apollo is smart, but his he, the way he treats women is immature and he doesn't care about justice. And that's the kind of world that the West has developed and it's exporting all over the world. It, does that make sense to you, May? Yes, yes, yes. yeah, I see. Very sad. <laughs> um, okay, Rossi, what have you got? Hi, Professor. Um, so I have an example, which is 
not much of like a close friend to mine, but he lives in my village. So like I grew up to know him and he is an introvert and he doesn't like to talk to people. So I don't usually see him outside of his house often since his parents sell like small stuff. Like he, they have like a small shop where they sell stuff. So like I usually like talk to him and stuff when I go to buy ramen or eggs from them and that's how I get to know him more but there since he doesn't talk and he doesn't interact with a lot of people when he was 13 years old his parents ended up kicking out him out of his house because they feel ashamed that he is not like regular and they always tell like the other villagers like he's like mentally disabled like disabled or something and it's a taboo here but he found his passion when he so he ended up living in the pagoda and so he found his passion for um drawing and so he ended up going to the royal university of fine arts and he studies as an architecture and so now his parents kind of like approves of him since he has like something stable and he like gets into the outside world and like interacts with people and they like ask him to go back home and stuff. That's a great example. Wow. Okay, uh, Madeline. So it was really difficult for me to come up with one because every single time I would like I was reading I'd come up with somebody and then I would continue reading and I was like okay just kidding if this one doesn't work uh so I'm gonna have to pass because I need a little bit more time to think <laughs> okay that's good I mean they do start overlapping um it is you know I can understand it would be the the main thing would be the craftsmanship like you can't start with the intro introversion but um Okay, that's fine. You'll find something. Uh, Jana Tool, did you find something? No, Professor, not yet. <laughs> okay. Um, DT, did you find something? Uh, Asbina? Oditi, do you have something? No, Professor, no, okay. Okay. Um, Asbina? Do you have an example? Okay. No, okay. Uh, Margia, yeah, you should, yeah, just go into the chat so I at least know that you're there. Of course, I also don't know if you're just internet went down, if that's why you're not on. But anyway, yeah, just let me know. Okay, Margia, have you got something? Okay. Um, Nahida, do you have something? Yes, Professor. Uh, I know one of my uncle. Uh, he is very actually introvert. And uh, after his graduation, he was very brilliant, intelligent, and always tried for government job and was uh, very introverted, actually. So uh, he made a relationship uh, and after her relationship, we don't know what happened. Uh, he maybe, uh, maybe her girlfriend was married. Then, then, then he was very hard uh, hearted and uh, she didn't marry afterward. Yet he is unmarried and he doesn't care about religion uh, he, and doesn't care about food. I don't know what type of man he is. Actually, he is living his life, his life with her family member. But uh, I don't think he is, he, I think he's mentally sick, but he acted like he's goat man, uh, actually healthy man. 
but I I I I I really fear of her when I I talk with him. Uh, he's very good person, and he advised me about my blah blah blah. But uh, I don't know. I don't understand him. He's a different different mysterious person. I think he knows many things, but but he he don't like to express everything. Expose she don't he don't like to expose himself. But he likes to work with his hands. Yes, professor. Did you say he's a handyman? He works with his hands. Uh, actually, he he doesn't work even. Uh, sometimes when he he is a happy mind, he goes outside, and uh, but but he don't like to work. But he like to advise person people, uh, and he depend on his family yet actually. He he gives advice to people. Yes, that that makes uh, others more uh, other people. That's why get, uh, mocking at her, him, but but he do, doesn't care about it. Okay. All right. Um, L. Uh, reading the the bit about Hephaestus, I got some uh, Edgar Allan Poe vibes because I I. I likened the craftsmanship to, to his writing because he's a very uh prolific writer he wrote a lot and i i feel like his story like his stories were very uh well crafted kind of well executed like pieces of prose you know um but he's also a very introverted person famously uh he died alone in a gutter after a drinking binge and i think that's also parallels a little bit where hephaestus is physically ugly He's deformed and he kind of like internalizes that a lot. Uh, I feel like Edgar Allan Poe had that internal ugliness that he saw in himself. And that is a, a big theme in his work and in his life as a whole. So I, I also drew that parallel. Yeah, the psychological wounding, right? He was wounded and that comes out in the physical wounding. So in the story of Hephaestus, it's literally his father wounds him by throwing him off the mountain <laughs> because he defended his mom or his, he's wounded because his mom had a, was jealous, was mad at his dad for being unfaithful. So she gave birth on her own just to get back at her husband. And then he was, uh, crippled right or else she crippled I mean it's always it's a psychological wounding does that make sense um why would you pick uh and this is totally a, an open question uh why wouldn't you pick Hades for Edgar Allan Poe because he's pretty dark is it because he wasn't aggressive Right? I think, the, yeah, I think the big thing is uh, Hades ha kind of has a personality to him. Right. Uh, and uh, he has that outward aggression and there's a little extroversion in Hades. Uh, but there's that big introvert quality that I think uh, is more Hephaestus. Yes. OK. And also crafting the stories. Right. That was his obsession. That's yes. what he sit in his workshop and do. OK, I think that's fair. It's just that, you know, the stereotype would be Hades, right? And so I think you're right, because I think people don't have enough um, subtlety, right, in understanding all eight of the gods. Um, well, nobody bothers to read it, right? Because it's dated. This doesn't happen anymore. Science and social science have gotten us over all this ugly stuff. Um, okay, Arifa, do you have anything? Okay. Um, Fahima, do you have something? No. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so, Dona? Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, like, I have an example. Like, uh, like he's a dancer. Like, the guy I know him, he's a dancer. Uh, he he had participated in the national level. And, like, he was an introvert person. And, like, uh, like uh, he was like not good in study and his all 
parents always uh, disappointed like uh, uh, did not support him like in his way like uh, without study uh, you cannot do anything but uh, what is left in the dance uh, that will not support your life in the future so like he was an introvert person and he doesn't reply his parents and nor nor he was interested in his study so like uh, what happened like uh, like he uh, by he, while he was discouraged so he left home and like he went to a bigger city and like there he started uh, building his career uh, career on dance and finally uh, he got an opportunity to uh, take part in an uh, uh, like state competition state level competition and like he was not the first but he was the runner up in the uh, dance competition and like uh, uh, and when he came back with the runner-up position, uh, all were happy with him. And like um, at, at a time, it happens that his parents also re uh, realized that they were wrong. His career's uh, career was on like uh, dance, and like he uh, he had two uh, two dance school in uh, uh, in his local place, and uh, uh, I think more than five hundred students come daily to. Uh, learn dance and now he's almost uh, like a star in his place like local area and like people always support him and like the way he thinks and the way he does is really different from the other people because because he is really introvert and like uh, and like uh, his uh, means like uh, what we will say but his what he thinks we cannot recall it but the uh, the work he does does uh, we can see the good things in it good that's great i i do hope all of you realize that the arts are so important you can't have you can't have a culture without the arts and not have violence i mean if you don't have the arts you're going to end up with violence because there's so much energy there that really needs a creative outlet um <sighs> But again, at, at least in the US, all the arts are getting cut and the people who are called artists are really not artists. And it, it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so now the next one is Dionysus. And the thing that's interesting, Bondona, is that Dionysus also was a dancer, but it's, he's a very different kind of personality, right? He's very extra and very sensual. So um, I think you're right about this guy. Yes, ma'am. Um, so let's go to um, Dionysus, right? The god of wine and ecstasy, the lover, the wanderer. He's close to nature and to women. Um, uh, let's see. He, he is the most, um, I guess, erotic, right? And he, he's the farthest removed from any kind of order and stability. He disturbs things, right? And, but the Greeks never condemn. They don't repress, right? And this is any kind of repressed emotion is going to come out in a bad way. So it's better to have Dionysus, to acknowledge Dionysus, even at his most, you know, wild and crazy thing, because if you recognize him, if you absorb him, if at the uh, Temple of Apollo, we'll talk about this later, if you give him three months to rule the area and give Apollo nine months, you've released all this energy and given Dionysus a chance to express, to have a voice. Everybody has to have a voice. Everybody's got to have their place. Uh, that's, I love that about the Greeks. That's why it's called humanism, spiritual humanism. It's, it's um, just acknowledging everything about life, the good, the bad, the ugly. Don't repress, don't make people feel guilty. Just figure out how to acknowledge them. Um, yeah, so I will talk more about Delphi, but just to give you a heads up, right? This temple, this the site of Apollo, 
allows for Dionysus to rule for three months. So that's all about balance. Um, all right. Let's see. Women. Okay. And there's a lot of dancing, right? A lot of crazy dancing. Um, I quoted a lot from this because I'm actually going to give a presentation on Saturday to a bunch of dancers. And my presentation is going to be about, they actually are interested in orf, orphism. My presentation is going to say, why don't you go back to the goddesses of Crete and re-envision uh, culture and the anima, just blow your mind, you know, create new images and new dances so that we can get over our repressive, in the U.S., emotionally repressed, puritanical, and then pro-science, right? We have all the science and technology and we have all these awful, ugly emotions. It, it's <laughs> American society is crazy. And I don't know about, you know, each of you can think about it compared to your societies, but American culture is very different from Europe um, in its strengths and its weaknesses. But we, we are very extreme right now because of our repression. Um, let's see. So the archetype, he's the divine child, the eternal ad adolescent, the mother's son. Well, you remember Her Hermes also was the little Peter Pan boy that never grew up. So you have to, you know, there's two kind of little boys that don't grow up. And so you think, well, what's the difference? You know, similarity and difference. Um, they're seeking an idealized woman. Um, yeah, and so here's a question of um, men projecting their, their psychological images onto women. And then women, you know, women are people. They're not these goddesses. They're not these images. They're actually people. Um, and, and so the relationship breaks apart. Um, Okay, so the Dionysus is in a connection with the great mother. Um, he tends to do more caretaking and domestic interests. So he can be, I mean, the irony is he can be the most, you know, orgiastic and chaotic, but he also has this potential to be the most integrated between masculine and feminine or animus and anima. And so I, you can say that in a society that is not integrated between animus and anima, which is ours is not, then he's a chaotic force because he is crying out at the diseases in the culture. He should be able to be himself and he, sh he should be affirmed as a role model. And yet for so many men, they don't want to come any, anywhere near being called effeminate, right? Or, or fem, you know, anyway, that's too bad because it, again, it drives people crazy. Um, dancing and lovemaking are where he's important, but his lovemaking is more like his own sensuous experience. Like, are you there, you know? <laughs> The partner might kind of wonder if he's just gotten into this and he's self-absorbed. So I think that's interesting. Um, certainly he would disrupt the Apollonian mechanical day-by-day -day, um, demands of culture, the Zeus, um, everybody who wants a structure, everybody getting up, going to work, coming home, doing this, doing that. You know, he would explode that. Um, okay, so he was raised by a girl. His mother substitutes are driven mad. He does girl things. Um, he likes cooking, music, art. He's sensuous. You know, he would, he would maybe talk more about some physical pain that he has where the other boys would, you know, tough it up 
no, I'm not hurt, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I have these little grandsons. And I think one of them really is more like this, but he tries to act like a tough guy. And <laughs> just, okay, okay, whatever. Um, let's see, try, okay, tries to please his parents. And so, again, if the parents don't accept him for who he is, he's wounded, right? Um, if they do take care of him, they protect him, they affirm him, he can be himself. Um, he doesn't worry about success. Um, he's more like his mom. Um, then, you know, if his dad rejects him for being femi, you know, then he will just over identify with the mom or the mom will hover over him like Demeter. And then that's not healthy. <clears throat> okay, so, um, in adolescence, that's a time of, you know, instability. Um, so if, if he grows up in a household, like there's so many around here where I live, where it's repressive religion, you're supposed to feel guilty about sex and sensuality. This makes it really hard for him. Um, he can't, you know, then you don't get a positive outlet. You don't get the arts. You don't get dance. You just get uh, repression and self-hatred. And then probably drugs or some other way to escape. Um, yeah, he tends to, again, not be an achiever because achieving requires so much emotional repression and distance. So Zeus and Apollo, if you remember, they're not e emotionally connected, right? They're distant fathers. And that's what we aspire to. Like that's what we're supposed to honor. So these guys are just like a cry for help or a cry in the wilderness saying, no, you know, what we value is too one-sided. Um, Elderly women see him as troubled. He's boyish. Um, okay. Let's see. He has highs and lows. He has a lot of female friends, even from grade school. Um, he's not a sports guy. You know, he doesn't hang out with the guys. You can imagine. Uh, he might be friends with the Hephaestus, right? because Dionysus would recognize his craftsmanship and his love of beauty. And um, Hephaestus would appreciate that somebody recognizes them. So that would be a, that could be a really kind of nice friendship that they'd have. Um, Apollo, if Apollo would recognize that Dionysus is a nice balance to him, right? That's why at Delphi you have Apollo for nine months and Dionysus, then they can be good friends. If you set up as culture like that, the culture can be a lot more balanced. Um, sexuality, it's sensual, but not interpersonal. He can't be counted on to be a breadwinner. Um, he's unpredictable. Okay, here's another theme is that Women will marry some of these guys, Hephaestus, Dionysus, Hades, and then expect them, right, to be committed uh, husbands and fathers and to get to work and to follow, you know, get into the straitjacket. And they can't or won't. And then she gets really mad, of course. Um, but, you know, a, excuse me, adjustments need to be made, some kind of balancing. So the kids get food, clothing, and shelter, but, you know, people can be themselves. That's the key. Um, he's a big kid, so he can be exciting, right? He can be playful, but also he's not dependable, and he doesn't help the kids you know, he doesn't have a network of professionals that he can connect his kids to. He's not good at discipline. He's not a good role model. 
but he could be kind of an earth at home earth father again because he doesn't follow that line that men are expected he can really feel like a failure and then um in the later years if he inherits money then he can be a playboy right he can get all these young sexual partners um and that's why i think inherited wealth is a, it's a corrupting influence on everybody the culture i mean you should have a high tax on wealth wealthy people should either get tax or give their money away um, middle class is really important everyone is corrupted by a gap but by people having way more money than they could possibly use um, psychological difficulties. Um, he needs a strong ego because he has his potential for going all over the place. Um, and again, our kind of society, a puritanical society, is really destructive to what's sacred about him, right? And then he just gets worse. Um, low self-esteem, um, People react to him differently. Some people love how boyish he is. Some people condemn him for being too sensuous. Um, he has potential for psychosis um, and substance abuse. Difficulties for others. Obviously, he's not going to play the role of the husband very well. Um, Let's see, ways to grow is that he has to learn self-control. He has to get a Zeus father figure type that'll mentor him or be a therapist for him. Hermes, um, that he can communicate with the underworld, but then come back to the upper world, right? And not get lost in it. Put his feeling into words, that's important, Hermes. And then Apollo, he needs to plan and he needs to get a sense that there's certain things that are true and become detached from yourself and your emotions sometime, sometimes in some aspects of life. Um, when he can react to his mother or women as uh, just a woman and not this huge <laughs> threat, um, he has He's freed his personal mother from the great mother. Um, he's become, he has a heroic ego and he's grown up. Um, so let's see what examples you came up with. Lakin, did you come up with something? No, I'm going to pass. Okay. Um, Rupia. Did you come up with something? Okay. Uh, Poppy. Okay, am I, um, okay. Rupia is going to pass. Okay, what about Poppy? Professor, also I want, because this still I am not uh, get any example like that. Okay, so you don't have examples? Not yet, Professor. Okay. Uh, Claire. I'm still working on one too. I was having a hard time coming up with this one. Okay. All right, I think it's partly because our culture thwarts it so much. Does that make sense? If you really were this way, you'd hide. <laughs> um, anyway, Louis, did you come up with one? Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think about a guy, uh, in, Italian guys I met when I did volunteer work in Myanmar. Um, he's the one who's cooked for all volunteer. Um, 
Uh, he said to me that he wants to be a chef in a restaurant, but his parents didn't support him. Um, last year when I came to Myanmar, uh, he has been there for almost like two or three years. Uh, in the daytime, he just cook and help us to take care of the patient. Um, but in the date night, like I have, I just, he has rumor, like I have heard from all the ones here that he just drink alcohol, you drugs and have sex with other volunteer. I happened to work with him uh, one time when I, um, when we, we talked to the children at a, uh, talked to a children in the village that he talked to me that he just felt get lost in his life. He like don't know what he, uh, he don't know like what he want to do um, and he just go around the world uh, he, he he already came to Vietnam and uh, teach for the children uh, in the North Vietnam for three years I think he talked with me yeah he, um, yeah like he didn't know what to do and just I he, he said to me that I he, he think he will just go around go somewhere he want and did a, did a work uh, that they offered to him just to be like that all his life. Yes, this is my experience. <laughs> okay, that he might end up wandering. Yeah, wandering around. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, you can understand how he needs to balance out Apollo and Hermes, right? These other uh, forces, if he doesn't sort of choose to do that, it could, it could de just degenerate. Yeah, that's too bad. Like if he likes kids, he could decide, you know, I think I'm gonna spend my life being a teacher of little kids, you know? Um, but that takes organization and you have to worry about yeah. your and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think he, he worked well with the kids. He interact with them very well. But when I asked him, like, uh, did you, uh, do you want to become a teacher? He know that, no, <laughs> he don't want to be that. <laughs> because right. he had to That's too be responsible for it too much thing. And especially with the kids, they have to be, uh, be teach by someone who like, a stable emotion and has responsibility. He cannot take this work. He told me like that. Yeah, yeah that's that sounds exactly like Dionysus, right? Does that make sense? Yes, this makes sense. Everybody, to I, I hope it makes sense to everybody. That that's a pretty good fit. Um, okay, May, did you find something? Yeah, uh, actually, I have one friend who is like a high school senior now. Um, he is very famous in my hometown for his ability to dance very skillfully, even when he was not learning in any dance um, class before. And also because he is very handsome, like, which is very mainstream thing here. Um, yeah, he was raised, he was born and raised in a family like full of girls. He is the only son in the family. So I think, and all of their sisters and also his mother um, are very girly. So I think he, uh, they influence him a lot. Um, but also because he is the only son, like they don't um, need, they don't like allow him to do the housework um, because they supposed, uh, because they think that um, houseworks are supposed uh, to be girls to work. So he doesn't know, how to cook or like to do the course um, for for his life. So now because he is um, living far from home, he's studying very far from home. So he doesn't know how to cook or to do the housework. So he just relies on his um, roommates. And also maybe sometimes he turned to me for help because he really, like he couldn't really cook for himself, uh, especially when he is um, sick. He doesn't know how to really deal with like his stuff. So yeah, and also in relationship with, um, uh, and also he is the only boy in his uh, class. All of other classmates are girls. Um, and usually because he is very famous and he is handsome. So he expect people to 
like come to him and ask um and ask what he needs and that's why he don't like he doesn't really like learn how to directly say what he needs he just like say very like indirectly and he expect other people to understand him so that's why he he really feel like ashamed if he really needs something and he said that but i think it's a very normal thing uh and also during like uh but he is also very emotional um and he that's why he could understand like girls feeling so that's why i can really like be a friend with him um he's not really like masculine or something like that and he really like can listen to me and also can like talk to me when i need um but also i really hope that in the future he can be more like mature in the terms that um he could say directly what he wants expect um regardless of like i uh, sorry like he can say what he really want rather than like expect people to understand him and also um he can like learn how to like deal with some like housework stuff so that he can live independently rather than relying on other people so um that's my friend and my example very good that works really well okay um rossi Hi, Professor. Um, I do have an example for Dionysus. And his name is, people know him as Rirat and he's a makeup artist. Just recently, he opens a wedding planner salon. And, but before then, he was raised in a family full of girls, just like May's example, he's the youngest son. And since he's raised by a family full of girls, that kind of affect like who he is. And so he loves makeup and he ended up applying makeup and he dressed in like quote unquote girly way. And so he likes to express himself that way, which makes his parents reject him because like in Cambodia, it's a taboo for guys to dress as good or to act not in a masculine way. But he tries to please his parents. He tries to perfect his makeup skills and he opens this um, wedding planners on in hope that his parents would like approve of him for who he is now. And he's very emotional because of like his parents' rejection. And so like he ended up going to parties and like bars and clubs and drinking when he's not doing makeup. Yeah, that's too bad, isn't it? Um, you shouldn't get your ego caught up in your kid. That's just not right. Um, DT, what have you got? Okay. Um, As Asbina, do you have something? Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. So Madeline, okay, she chose one of her old friends, Anthony. Worked with him at a pizza place. He was great with adults. Um, Let's see, he, he would take care of the place where the kids were. Let's see. Um, oh my gosh, it keeps, it keeps moving on me. My eyeballs are too old. Um, his mother raised him because the father wasn't around. Most of his friends were women. Men found him strange because he enjoyed things that only women typically do. He acted more like a girl but he's not afraid of to be himself and his mother supports him. So, okay, good. Um, so, uh, okay, so Rossi got disconnected. That's okay. Espina said she's writing her example, but I don't see it. So where are we now? Um, Margia, did you have something? 
Uh, Nahida, did you have something? No, Professor. Okay. Um, L. There's a there's an actor that's named Jeff Goldblum that reminds me a lot of the Dionysus archetype. Uh, I went I went down like a rabbit hole on YouTube one day when I was stuck in the snow and I've watched a bunch of uh, interviews of this guy and he has this this really effeminate but it borders on childlike personality to him. Um, it's it's very distinct. He's a very eccentric guy and. That's what he's known for. Every movie that he stars in, he's not really playing a character. He's just being himself in that situation. Um, What's his name? Jeff Goldberg? Goldblum. Bloom. Okay. Yeah. Um, but just his, his, he has a very, it's, it's a way about him that's very unique. Um, you can't really tell like if he's like, uh he doesn't really fit in any uh, any like mm, for side of like the gender roles you know he kind of breaks those norms he he he's flamboyant the way he dresses but it's not it's not anything it's just he, he's being himself okay yep that's it um how old is he right now i believe he's in his 50s right now okay well, he hasn't, you know, had any kind of, well, maybe he has had psychotic breaks or something, right? Um, he seems to like live in his own little world, you okay. know? Okay. Let's see, Arifa, are you there? Um, okay. Let's see, Nahida, did you say? You don't have anything, okay. Uh, Arifa, Jana Tool, do you have something? No, Professor. <clears throat> no, okay. All right, uh, Bondona, do you have something? Mm -hmm. Uh, you have something? Uh, like, uh, there are any examples like that? Like, uh, I recite in it. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yep. Hello? Yep, I can hear you. Uh, like, ma'am, like, there are many examples. Yeah, uh, there are many examples, like, uh, of the architect. Uh, like, I have seen many, like, uh, men who different very different from like like men they behave like women and like they are called as transgender or like hijra in our like country so like there are many successful people uh, beside them because uh, like uh, they have a community but uh, like in india uh, uh, now there are like uh, I mean, so there are laws on which transgenders are treated equally as normal human being. So uh, there, there is an IPS. There are uh, successful actors. Uh, there are like many people. So, so like uh, uh, in my knowledge, I know one uh, famous makeup artist uh, who is a, a gay. Uh, like we can call him gay, but he's very like uh, like. Uh, fond of makers like uh, even in bridal uh, like in marriage party uh, the people call him for making uh, means like uh, for bridal makeups and in even in fashion so or like any other so uh, people always call him for like uh, makeups and he is like famous for it and like uh, he got many uh, state uh, award for uh, like uh, for Okay. For good makeups, and like, I also know an actor. Uh, I also know an actor whose name Bollywood actor whose name is Lakshman uh, Lakshmi Narayan Tripathi. He's transgender. Uh, he's even a Bollywood actor. He's a Bharatnatyam dancer, and like, um, uh, he also uh, is uh, very good. Uh, very good. Uh, before he became successful, he was uh, denied by people. 
treated him very badly but like he was very successful on his way and like he became a good dancer even a good choreographer and he is motivational speaker for like the people who def uh, the man who uh, act like an omen or behave like an omen so he motivates people like them so uh, yes uh, because of him uh, because of uh, like her uh, like people get motivated or uh, like now people uh, like uh, who do have community transgender community so uh, he's a motivational speaker for them and people always are inspired by uh, uh, means him good i Every the Hindu culture had that third sex, right? Hinduism was really tolerant on sexuality. And so whenever I have students from India and also Indonesia, actually, there was one stoplight in uh, Bandung where you usually had to wait about 45 minutes. But that was where the transgender people were would congregate and they would play music and I think sell things or something. Uh, and then there was another restaurant where the hostess, the receptionist was uh, clearly transgender. And so, yeah, it is just more accepted um, in a society that's dominantly Hindu or, um, yeah, I mean, Indonesia is not dom predominantly, but um, uh, the one island is mostly Hindu the one that's the big visitor center, I can't remember. And then also there's certain places in certain cities that everybody sort of knows about. So that's interesting. So Asbina says that she's had, she has friends raised in a family of females and they have these more effeminate personalities and they get mocked out a lot by, um, by people who think men should act, you know, tough. Okay, so who else do we have? Um, Rossi, did you already speak? Um, I yeah. did speak, but I got disconnected, so I'm not sure if you heard my example. Oh, I did a makeup artist, uh, wedding planner. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, who else? Anybody else that hasn't had a chance yet? Okay. I mean, it's kind of amazing how it sort of all wraps up after an hour and 40 minutes. Um, all right. So in your posts, you can just do the, you know, what I ask you, one example for each one. But if you want to also reflect a little bit on like the differences between the male archetypes and the female archetypes, if you want to think back about the ones in Crete, and if you want to think about what a radical shift that would be for us to actually develop a culture that affirms women and in affirming women, you're going to affirm our relationship with nature and that's what we need to do. So it's obvious at this time in history, we have to integrate nature and culture. But when you study these archetypes, you realize how much of a radical shift that would be culturally for us to go back to the, the Crete goddesses just for ideas. We can't, there's no way we can go back there in our psyches, but we can go forward with those ideas guiding us, right? And, and the other point I do want you to make, I guess one last um, plug, Make you know AUW is this incredibly good place for you to, to develop this woman culture because the broader culture is tough. Um, it's tough on women. It's tough on men. Um, but I do think AUW is is a wonderful place. Um, and I don't. And I do think that that every single student, every single minute, should value it. Because when I was there last time, the students said that that some students, you know, pick on other ones. They're critical. They gossip. Definitely, you shouldn't do that. It's too precious. Uh, there's a there's a big bad world out there. Um, but I do think it's hard on men when they're expected to be like Zeus and Apollo. They're absolutely like nobody's expectations are actually healthy. So 
um, what she says at the end is that the men have to develop a healthy ego, right? Everybody has to develop an ego where they're strong enough to be able to take these various passions and integrate them, not let them get out of hand. And you remember with Sophia in the other book, she was the, the head and all the other goddesses, you know, had to, had to answer to her and answer to each other. So you could picture um, the Sophia as a guy, I don't know what you would call him because we don't have I think you should just call him Sophia. <laughs> and uh, he would, the other gods would be talking and they would be, you know, yelling at each other like Zeus would. So Zeus, you got it, like you got to cut some slack and let Dionysus be Dionysus, right? And uh, see, Apollo does sometimes, and, you know, all these things that are all really, really. Uh, deep-seated instinctual drive. So the crazy thing about human beings is that we are a kind of animal, like we have instincts and we will really react violently if we feel threatened or um, sex drive is extremely powerful. So we have these powerful drives and we can tie them to all sorts of weird fantasies and phobias, right? And so they can really get out of balance. They can go crazy because of our self-conscious awareness and our ability to create an image in our head of who we are, who other people are, what a society is, and that the poets, the artists, the dancers, the musicians, they're all trying to educate our imaginations so that we have a better sense of uh, how complex it is, how ambiguous things are. Nothing's cut and dried, but you know, you've got to balance the need for order with the need for spontaneity. You, you really got to let yourself, you know, make yourself get organized and disciplined oh, or you will, you will, your life will fall apart at age 40, right? And you won't be able to recover. So you must discipline yourself. Um, and then if you can have, you know, an organized life, a career, maybe marriage and family, but just a CV, you've got to have something to show, right? Just like the woman, the women had to have that wool of the ram, like you've got to have something. And then you can figure out what you're really passionate about. You can let yourself be yourself. You can figure out maybe that would be a business. Maybe you could actually turn that into a business or a leisure time activity. If you like to coach kids on sports teams, there's so many things people can do that other people could appreciate. Like if you have a kid who's a Dionysian kid, you know, maybe you're not comfortable, but you should at least give, find a mentor, you know, a father figure, a mother figure, someone who can mentor that child. Because every child needs a good mentor to mentor them into adult life. If it's somebody, you know, that they feel spiritually connected to, that person, when that person says, you need to develop a career, you need to manage, you know, your, your dance business or your makeup business, and then they'll do it, you know, because they, they can trust this person is truly giving them good guidance. They're not making them feel guilty. They're not making them repress. They're saying, if you really want to be yourself over an 80 year trajectory, you do have to balance these things out. So um, yeah, my story was the story about getting hit <laughs> at age 21. You know, you're married, you're pregnant, and you fall in love with philosophy. Ah! And then at 42, that blows up, and these other ones come in. Um, 
And then I only figured it out after the fact, right? So here you go, you know, I'm trying to give you this wisdom so that you can figure out at your age, maybe you are a non-traditional type. And a lot of students who take philosophy at Lyon College, they are the non-traditional students. I get all, every student who thinks outside of the box. And um, that's fun, I like that. But they also have to, they've got to develop a CV, they've got to get a good degree, they have to find some kind of job and move up, you know, because um, they don't want to be an irresponsible spouse or an irresponsible parent. They do want to be able to love their spouse or their kids in a way that's natural to them, but they must provide for them, right? They've got to deal with the public world. And they also have to learn to socialize in a way that doesn't embarrass their children, right? Don't get into fights with other parents or don't, um, you know, don't be so isolated that I just remember at one point my kids, I would say to them, oh, I'll talk to you about anything. And we don't need you to talk to us, mom. We need you to go into these social situations that we're in and just be nice, be polite, be sociable, you know? You're too, you make us uncomfortable in front, of, right? So yeah, a good parent is like a God. They're supposed to do everything. And when they don't get it right, the kid is wounded because they need you to be perfect. But, um, but that's, I mean, that's how complicated life is. And um, so, uh, don't be surprised if life gets complicated and just remember, you know, that this is adult life. I did remember telling myself, yeah, this is adult life. That's okay. I want to be a grown up. I just didn't know it was that hard. <laughs> so, okay, we'll see you next time. And I will, uh, could somebody at AUW just confirm to me that you do have a holiday next Monday? Um, yes, we do. What? Yes, yes we, we do. do. Okay, I just want to make sure because again, I can look at a calendar 50 times and somehow get it wrong. Um, so I will sort of adjust the assignments so that each, you know, each class will get what they need and that'll work. So I got to let you go. Time to go. Thank you, Bye. Professor. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank you, Professor. See Thank you. you. Next week. Thank you for your examples. I really appreciate them. So, Jana Tool, I'm thinking about you and I'm hoping things are going well. <laughs> it's, it's hard. But you know, it's good. You learn how to juggle stuff at a young age and that's a good lesson. Okay, I'm gonna go, that's all right.